So, Mr. Naruhodo, I think perhaps it's time we ended this game of hide and seek, don't you? By opening the safe, you mean? What else? Let's see, the combination was 1... 432582. I knew that! <laughs> Alright then, here goes. Oh. Hello. You found me. Uh, uh, <laughs> are you okay, sir? Oh, I like his theme music. Right then, Mr. Enoch Trevor, I presume. Correct. You'd better start talking. You tricked Professor Hairbrain with that bogus machine you built. And you shall have to explain the theft of the waxwork from Madame Tespels as well. Whilst I would be delighted to answer your many questions. Or maybe I have to give him like a monotonous robotic voice. Personally, I would advise that you deactivate my little parcel first. Deactivate your parcel? I refer, of course, to the time bomb I left in the most prominent position. Ah, it is a time bomb! Ha ha ha, I see, a uh, stunned silence. You're all gearing up to die with me then? No! Mr. Sholmes, with only seven seconds to spare. That was too close for comfort. I've got one foot in the grave already. Are you trying to help us get a killer or get us killed? Mr. Shams' deductions can be completely life-altering, can't they? Oh well, my dear fellows, that was a close shave. The resemblance to an anti-gravity device is really quite startling, I must say. There's no such thing! Anti-gravity devices don't exist. Ooh, I wouldn't push it, Mr. Shams. Okay, hello. The time bomb. Good death wish, have you? Hiding right beside the ticking time bomb. Please, why do you suppose I chose to hide inside the safe? It's no ordinary safe. It's specially designed. The dynamite explosion wouldn't leave a scratch on it. So, in fact, the safe was the only safe place. <laughs> Precisely. But once you climbed inside, you would have been able to get out again. You wouldn't have been able to get out again. I invite you to look more closely. The safe is fitted with a handle on the inside to allow the door to be unlocked from within. Ah, so does. I had always intended to blow this place to smithers in any case. I just wasn't expecting an invited guest to come along and screw up my, screw up my plans. <gasps> Uh, do you... Uh, do you mean to say you were planning to blow us all up? No, no, that was unforeseen. What do you mean? Most people run, you see, when they see a ticking time bomb at their feet. Ah! I calculated the time required for the retreat to a safe distance and set the device accordingly. But your seemingly endless discourse in here through a spanner in the works. <laughs> Shams, it's all your fault. Is something wrong, Gregson? Do I have something on my face besides the usual eyes, ears, nose and mouth? What on earth happened in here? You found me, haven't you? No need to screw me down any further. Everything in here is precisely what it seems. Yeah, we're really giving it thorough going over, don't you worry, Drebba. Of 
What fails to click with me is how you were able to locate my workshop that I was not expecting. When I heard whistling from the other room, I knew it was time to bolt. Whistling? Ah, that would have been me. Oh. For some reason. I woke in fine feather today. <laughs> Gregson is not pleased at all. No words, just tightly squeezed chips. Clearly I must have a screw loose though, as I couldn't remember the combination for the safe. And another one loose as I couldn't remember on which piece of furniture I'd written it on. We also found a rope over by the wall. Yes, I had hoped to exit through the skylight, but sadly the rope was too short. So, I then set about searching for the combination code to open the safe. And burning the incriminating blueprints, don't forget. Regrettably though, you failed to retrieve the head from the balloon among the rafters. And after that, you hid yourself inside the safe. Having first set this parcel ticking. Well, I had no intention of being nailed by the police. I think we have a fairly good idea of what's been going on here now. But what about the two incidents you've evidently been involved in recently? Professor Hairbrain's instantaneous kinesis experiment at a great exhibition. And a waxwork model you stole, which this head belongs to. There's no ordinary head, you know. That's the head of the professor. Clad in a mask with a lock so strong I'm unable to open it safely to reveal the killer's identity. Okay. Wait, who did that? Mr. Spells? I've been considering carrying it around as protection after all. That's enough. Oh! Oh! That's enough. What's going on here, Gregson? I'm sure you're aware that I have a s I have so jurisdiction to investigate here. Oh, yes, well... Dr. Scythe again. So the forensic investigation team are here. And you know full well this engineer is a key witness. Why are you allowing this lawyer access to him? If Lord Strongheart knew of this, you'd be finished. You lot, leave at once. My dear madam, there's no need for such threatening tone, I assure you. After all, there's no way to greet an old acquaintance, is it, Dr. Sai? Hello, Sholmes. Does not seem to be very pleased. Sholmes knows Dr. Sai. If it's protecting the machine next door that's causing such a sour expression on your face, you are quite misguided. It's really nothing more than a shell you... Get out! Oh, but of course, we'll show ourselves to the door. I see you haven't softened at all. Mr. Naruhodo? Yes? It would appear that our delightfully entertaining investigations have run their course for today. But, but Mr. Sholmes! Let us leave this place in the doctor's capable hands. Ah. Uh. I said get out now. All of you. Your presence here is not required either, Gregson. Ooh. Understood. But I'll just say one thing before I head off. If it wasn't for this lawyer and his companions, we'd never have found this place, and the whole workshop would have been blown to bits. There was a time bomb set in here, that this lot disarmed. Inspector. <laughs> Something giving you trouble, has it, Trevor? Ah, uh, so sorry. Didn't mean to offend, you're quite right, of course. You did disarm the time bomb, didn't you? Uh-oh. <gasps> yes, you did disarm that one. Uh, what are you? 
That one? Ya, ya mean? Uh. Holy crap. It was an hour later that we heard the news of the enormous explosion that ripped through the experimentation stage at the Great Exhibition. Professor Hairbrain's invention and all its secrets were blown away forever. After this revelation, are we still going through with the trial? What the heck? Good morning to you, Mr. Lenerhudo. Uh, good morning, Professor. Ready for today's proceedings? I hope so. I should be. Even I, with nothing left to... Good morning, my dear fellows. Oh, Mr. Sholmes, you're here. Why, naturally, a true gentleman stands shoulder to shoulder with his friends in battle at all times. Then what about yesterday? Thank you, I really appreciate it. I'll see you later then. Now, Professor, we really need you to remain calm in the courtroom today. Yes, do try your hardest not to enter the witness stand uninvited again. Yeah, with your sudden outbursts. That will undermine my theories and stuff like that. Oops, I didn't read anything. Yes, I, will. I realized it was a mistake, but I... My dear fellows, I must interject. Oh, you still here, Mr. Sholmes? What's the matter? Surely you've overlooked some praise, have you not? To be cast in my direction, hmm? Yeah, well done on getting up early and showing up on time. What do you want me to say? Sorry, I don't follow. Must I spell it out? I, the great Herlock Sholmes, the greatest detective of worldwide acclamation, arose at some ungodly hour to be here now, first thing in the morning. A miracle, you must agree. Well, if I must agree, then I agree. As you know, my sleep is quite impregnable. I was had to employ her full gamut of tactics. She pulled the covers off, shook me, poked both cheeks, punched me and kicked me from the bed. Then she poured a boiling cup of her latest experimental blend on my face and at last I was bestirred. That doesn't sound too healthy. Oh my, Iris has been busy. Yeah, we really should thank Iris. Iris doesn't have it in her to go that far, she's too nice. Uh, I sense the spirit of a fellow scientist, one who relishes the infinite possibilities of blending tea. I'm the one worthy of praise here, not Iris. This is my victory. Okay. Oh. Who's this? Sorry to cut in. Is it Van Zeeks? Sorry to cut in. Oh, Gregson. Inspector Gregson, good morning. Gregson, my dear fellow, why the grim expression? It is delightfully an early hour. Oh, I don't know, maybe because I've been confronted with a grim expression, eh? Dear me, are you going to take that insult lying down, Professor? What? What? I don't know. Poor Professor. Anyway, here's the paperwork you asked for. What paperwork? Yeah, wait, what? Ah, I took the liberty of requesting it yesterday. I have a feeling it may prove useful. You wouldn't believe the hoops I had to jump through to get this part out of the archives. It's the professor's autopsy report. Uh, okay. Shouldn't this be an evidence? Do we not have... Oh, wait, the professor's autopsy report. The killer, the serial murderer. 
Why, why do we want that? That... that mass murderers? Who killed five members of the aristocracy? He was on duty in a close trial ten years ago now. It was all done under wraps. But he was quickly executed soon after the trial. It's all in here. Okay. I... I don't know what to say. Thank you, Inspector. Condemned prisoner. Pseudonym. The Professor. Death by hanging confirmed at midnight, 17th June. Courtney Stevens. Courtney Stevens. Courtney Stevens. Courtney Scythe. Is it the same Courtney? Who is also named Stevens? Odie Asman. Enoch Drabber. No one is named Stevens, right? Bohemian boy. <laughs> he doesn't even his, has his full name in here. Do we know a Stevens? We don't. We don't know a Stevens yet. Yes, much obliged, Gregson. I was the only lord of the yard, are just doing what we can. In the shadow of the great detective Sholmes, of course. Ooh, a lot of respect. Well then, Professor Hairbrain, this is it. Today we're going to lay all this to rest at last. I wish you the best of luck, Professor. I suppose he be in there today, will he? Trevor. Yes, we expect the prosecution to summon him as a witness. I'm so amazed that you managed to find him in just one day. I really owe you both men so much. Kozu is a defendant. The trial is about to resume. This is it then, the final chapter. Funny, my heart's racing a little. I've not felt this before, actually, this strange foreboding. As if something's going to happen that I'm not ready for. But I can't let that distract me from the only thing that really matters. Finding the truth. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session again. We resume the public hearing of Albert Hairbrain, here present, who stands accused of murder. All the counsels ready uh, for the prosecution and defense ready to proceed. The prosecution is ready, my lord. The defense is ready, my lord. <sighs> As promised, Lord Van Zeeks has his apprentice with him. His apprentice with memory loss. If I may, Lord Van Zeeks. Yes, my lord. There appears to be someone standing at your side. Ah, yes, my apprentice and assistant. The prosecution believes today's proceedings will see the complexity of this case rise considerably. I therefore instructed my assistant to attend to ensure the smooth running of the trial. Oh my god, that really does remind me of Kazuma. Holy crap! <laughs> the smooth running of liquid refreshments by the look of it. The way he holds himself, the way he moves. It couldn't be anyone else. But he's still suffering from amnesia, so there's really nothing we can do at the moment. I know, but... Oh, this is so very hard. And this... Like this uncertainty about Kazuma and stuff like that. Sure, we... 
we see its pose and stuff like that, but he's still masked. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe it's someone else entirely still. Right? This uncertainty. That's the thing that makes me... Makes this whole thing even worse. It would appear that the prosecution has done a fine job in responding to the demands of the court made yesterday. I understand you have successfully secured the engineer who disappeared from the scene on the day in question. Yes, my lord, I intend to call him as a witness shortly. Very good, very good. Now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, who have been chosen at random to represent the will of the people in this courtroom today, are you ready? Of course, my lord. I'm sure we all understand the importance of doing our civic duty. I just despise deception and deceit. I find it so very wearing. To take a man's life with a conjuring trick, it is against the magician's code not to mention the law. Um, anything like this you should be the word of God if you ask me. Uh, uh, we have to listen what he said on both sides of the hand and, uh, and then said on one. That's it, isn't it? Well, like that in my day, one like this is all. <laughs> If all parties are ready to proceed, you may begin, Lord Von Zeeks. Before I do, my lord, there's a report I must read to the court. Yesterday, at the great exhibition grounds, the evidence of primary importance in this case. The super high voltage instantaneous kinesis machine, which was installed on the experimentation stage, was deliberately destroyed in an explosion affected by an unknown person or persons. It was what? An explosion? This is an outrage. Yes, I heard this grave news yesterday. Scotland Yard will admitted to report to my office in the evening. I read that the machine was plastered to smithers and the record reduced it to ashes in the flames. I have here a photographic print of the scene, taken in the wake of the explosion. It shows what little remains of the machine. Yes, a terrible business. He did it to destroy the evidence, did he? Let it not Trevor. The court will take this print as evidence, counsel. The metal floor of the stage has been blown open by the explosion. Late yesterday afternoon, the protection afforded to the machine by the Special Dispensation of Scientific Equipment Act was revoked. Hold on. I don't see anything suspicious on this photo yet. However, before a thorough investigation could begin, the invention was obliterated from existence. As such, this will become a very different trial. Uh. As it stands now, with no evidence on which to draw meaningful conclusions, the authenticity, authenticity of the kinesis machine will remain forever in obscurity. Objection? Objection? Indeed, a most unfortunate state of affairs. Objection? However, one thing remains clear. The victim's death was the result of the actions of the accused. Uh, hello? Isn't there a prototype at Enoch Drabber's workshop? What about that? Of that, we can be certain. For it was the accused himself who was operating the machine and who ultimately caused its loss of control. Objection! As Lord von Zeeks rightly says, this is a very different trial now. The accused accepts responsibility for his part in the events that transpired. He acknowledges that Mr. Asman died as a result of the accident caused by his machine's malfunction. However, unbeknownst to the professor, he was being deliberately deceived by a pair of very clever fraudsters. Names, counsel, if you please? 
The engineer, Mr. Enoch Draper, and the victim himself, Mr. O.D. Asman. So what exactly were those two men up to, behind the defendant's back? The defense intends to expose that information, thus establishing the inequivocal innocence of the defendant. Thank you, counsels. The positions of the prosecution and defense has been clearly stated. Lord Van Zeeks, summon your first witness, please. At once, my lord. The prosecution caused the engineer, Mr. Anno Draper, to the stand. State your name and occupation for the court. Name, Enoch Treba. Occupation. Hard to pin down, I would say. See that block monocle? Yes, oh, why do I feel as though I've seen it somewhere before? Whoa, you do? I had exactly the same feeling as you. Mm. <laughs> Your file indicates that you are currently being investigated in connection with another case, the theft of a waxwork model, is it? A most extraordinary sounding business. But that has no bearing on this trial, I assure you. Cleave it from your mind. You're familiar with the public experiment carried out at a great exhibition some days ago? The accused's super high voltage instantaneous kinesis demonstration? Yes, you could say that. I am aware of it. There was a terrible accident, wasn't there? It was you, Mr. Drabber, who constructed a vast machine used in the experiment, or so our investigations indicate. Can you confirm your involvement? Yes, I constructed it in precise accordance with the blueprints, but that's all. Then the court would be very interested to hear your thoughts about the machine, I'm sure. An amazing device, if you ask me. The pinnacle of modern science making instantaneous kinesis a reality at last. What? Good, good gracious, do you mean to say that the experiment was bona fide? Is that your belief, sir? Yes, that is very much my belief. Such a waste that it blew up. Objection! But we've already established the machine was nothing more than a prop for an elaborate conjuring Objection! trick. Objection! You've established nothing of the sort. All that was shown during yesterday's proceedings is that the same outcome could have been produced by means of a stage trickery. The defense merely proposed the method and demonstrated its feasibility, nothing more. But... but... We've procrastinated long enough, I fear. Witness, you will now give your formal testimony about a machine that you constructed for the purpose of the demonstration. Understood. Hmm. I met the young professor ex approximately, <laughs> approximately one year ago through Mr. Esman's introduction. He provided me with the blueprints and I constructed the machine to his precise specifications. It was no trick. If the whole show was a fraud, it would have required a dark body double. Double. Tell me, did the victim have a twin? All the spectators saw the birdcage appear above their heads and then crash headfirst into the crystal tower. A terrible accident, I grant you. Perhaps the signs on which the machine was built was flawed somehow? A, a body double? That goes without saying, surely. To give the impression that something has moved when in reality it hasn't, it's a basic contouring principle. The deception cannot be achieved without substituting the original with a fake with some, at some point in the performance. But would, it, would I be right in saying you haven't managed to establish anything along those lines? Uh, incidentally, the prosecution has already confirmed that Mr. Esman had no twin siblings. 
Hmm, uh, it's my understanding that this witness is well versed in conjuring art for this. But such talents do not indicate that he was actually able to accomplish what he claims. Namely, the construction of wall by all accounts must have been an extremely complex scientific machine. Whatever do you mean? Yesterday's proceedings brought the true nature of your past exploits to light, Mr. Drabber. Indeed it did, my lord. As a swindler who preys on innocent scientists to elicit government grant money through conjuring know-how. Yes, it's true that I possess considerable knowledge of the stage magic. But crucially, my scientific knowledge more than matches that any uh, more than matches that any of any academic in the field. Investigation of the witnesses' workshop attests to that claim, my lord. As evidence, the police found this Royal Society trophy for young talent in science here. Yes, that's true. We spotted it there ourselves. If a hypothesis is sound, it can always be forged into a physical manifestation with sufficient skill. Though I may have sold the sequence of some deceptive words to sniveling, talented scientists in the past. Would you therefore assert that the explosion of the machine was uh, an unfortunate accident? Or, of course, a deliberate act of murder carried out by misuse of the science. Ah. Uh. That, that has taken a turn. Causal for the defense, your cross examination, please. Yes, my lord. This has taken a bad turn. Mm -hmm, we know that. You constructed the machine to its precise specifications, really. It's clear that you have both scientific knowledge and knowledge of conjuring magic, however. The more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to handle whatever comes along. But your implication is... That I furnished the machine with some trickery, I think. It's a possibility that we have to explore. Unfortunately though, the machine has been blown to a kingdom come. So there really is nothing left to explore, is there? It appears that the kinesis machine was fitted with a timed explosive device of some kind. And there's nothing left of that device either. Not a single shred of evidence remaining, I hear. She must have planned all this from the outset. But in any case... It's abundantly clear that the experiment couldn't have been a trick. Did we collect some evidence? No? There's a wooden bird cage, a camera. That's around the neck of the waxwork. Why is it even in here? Mm, small fragment of very unusual thick glass. Have we investigated? We haven't investigated this, this before. What a wonderful machine! You really love contraptions like this, don't you? Oh yes, anything mechanical I find absolutely irresistible. Almost irresistible, surely? Well, whenever I see a pocket watch, for example, I can't help myself. I simply have to take it apart. That's... worrying. Yes, father tells the time, but the rumblings of his stomach now. He's given up having a watch. Poor Professor Mikotova. But look at that, there's blood on here. Look, Mr. Narodo. What is it? On the bellows just here, there seem to be some very dark sta red stains. Yes, you're right. It looks like blood, actually. Oh, oh my. I'm, I'm sure it's not what you're thinking. <laughs> not really convinced yourself. Oh look, the cover came open. Yes, now, there should be a glass plate inside. You have to change the plate with each new photograph you want to take, you see. Is something wrong? 
There's no plate. It's been removed. Ah, oh, what a pity. But I suppose if you think about it, yeah, it's a model camera. This wouldn't be the actual camera that was used at the time. Just like the waxwork isn't the actual person. Exactly! So we'd never have found a photographic print of the executed convict coming back to life anyway. Oh, yes, you're quite right, of course. Poor Susato-san, she looks devastated. I think it would be more devastating to see the corpse rising from its grave. That would be devastating. This piece of glass is almost as thick as it is wide. Yes, I've never seen anything like it. If you were to compare it to a human, only Mr. Sholmes has such a thick skin. There's really no need for such a comparison, Mr. Nanohodo, as you well as you well know. Anyway, it can only be from the Crystal Tower, surely. Yes, I think so too. It was probably made especially to meet the demands of that great structure. Yeah, we knew that. We have a trophy. There's a little metal plug here, look. Fostering burgeoning talent for the future of scientific discovery. It seems rather ironic, doesn't it? But clearly Mr. Drabber really was a very talented scientist. Maybe he stole it. Or maybe he tricked the jury into believing it was real science. That's just the waxwork figurehead. Why do we want to know the identity of the professor? This lock does look very strong, doesn't it? There's definitely no way you could remove the mask yourself if it was put on you. What a terrible way to treat someone, even a convicted criminal. I know, it's starting to make me livid actually. Mr. Naruto, please. I mean, just think about it. Imagine if you had an itch on your cheek all of a sudden, you'd be utterly helpless. That's so true. Well, yes, that's true. But I'm not sure that warrants quite as much anger. Oh, right, sorry. Uh, why does the game not want us to know about... Why does the government not want us to know about the uh, identity of the criminal? I suppose this is the way it was for the real professor as well, right? Why would Madame Tuspels put the waxwork head into such a contraption? if not for historical reasons, right? To match reality? Maybe the professor was Van Sieg's brother. <laughs> that would be so effed up. A twin. A body double. Do you really need a body double for that? Let me look. Oh, wait, I cannot look at my... at the people. Damn it. Okay. Of course, that's it. Mr. Esmond was a twin. <laughs> Objection! Perhaps my learned friend wasn't listening earlier. Mr. Esmond had no twin siblings. No, I heard you before, but a thread of hope hadn't quite left me. The demonstration could have been a trick if there was somebody who looked sufficiently like the victim. But Dr. Scythe absolutely ruled that out as a possibility. Well, the question is, can we trust Dr. Scythe? Can we trust her? Well, speaking of the plus sign on her jacket, I mean... Our dear friend Barok Van Ziegs also has a plus thing across on his coat. 
So maybe it doesn't say anything. Who looks like him? No one looks like him. <laughs> the ODS man. It is beyond question that the victim himself, Mr. Esmond, did move from the stage to the Crystal Tower. The fingerprints found at the scene attest to the fact. Oh, fingerprints. So it can't have been orchestrated using someone who looked identical to Mr. Esmond then? What are you thinking, Mr. Nanahudu? That we are screwed? Oh no, nothing. Just that the idea of someone who looked identical to the victim is playing on my mind. 